Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Clay Wong. Today we have a very exciting video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time. This is a car that I've owned for a number of months and honestly through the ownership that I've had with it, I am falling in love with this thing all over again because guys, this is by far one of the best daily drivers that I've ever owned in my life. And guys, if you know, I have owned a fair few cars in my time and it just seems that I can never really find the right car that just suits me well. But since buying my 1999 Mercedes-Benz W202 C-Class, this is a C180. Guys, this is honestly one of the most robust, sound, fun, cruisy, you damn it guys. This has been an epic daily driver and I know I've had some issues with it in regards to the misfire. That was very easily riddled with a set of coil packs, spark plugs. It now drives absolutely sublime. So I'll take you guys for a walk around, but guys, if you want to see more content on the C180, the W202 Merc, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get into this video guys. It is pretty much a standard Merc from the get-go on the outset, but it is slammed on airbag suspension. So as a result, it is really, really quite low. It's currently aired out right now, but let's have a look at this thing up close. It's got this lovely dark blue color, but guys, it is a 23 year old car. It's pretty much just got some standard S-Class wheels from a newer generation. Kind of cool three spoke situation. It's got the airlift performance bags that have been fully installed in the car. This is the inside. So this car has been very nicely specced out from factory. So it's a two owner car. The first owner optioned it. Very, very rarely do you ever see a C180 with leather interior. Very, very rare do you also see a C180 with a sunroof. So very nicely done by the original owner. It's got full lockbooks history, full service history, just a big catalog of all the parts. Everything's been really well maintained in this car, obviously, apart from the fact that it was misfiring because of the coil packs. But come on in, I'll show you the nice wood grain interior, which is really, really sweet. It's got the airbag management system in the middle there, so you can adjust whether to go high or low. But overall, very, very clean interior. And guys, it really surprises me that this car actually has just shy of 200,000 Ks at 195,000 and still really presents quite well. Something to note about European cars is that the paint is just so much more dense and stronger that it really doesn't age like typical Japanese paint, like, you know, the Hondas, the Nissans, they just tend to fade. But this car has no paint fade. Amazing. Oh, I also forgot to mention that at the front here, I got the whole front end resprayed. I wanted to make sure that it looked appropriate with the signature plate. So all Mercedes Benzes have this typical thing where they have a number plate bracket. I guess being designed for Europe, they always have those things. So I had that removed had the holes filled and we stuck Z47 on. Kind of looks like 24-7, so it's kind of cool. Just thought it really fits the look of the car. You know, it's really funny though. People think that this car is worth a lot of money. Whenever I'm just cruising around, it's strange. Like this car, honestly, is one of the cheapest dailies that I've ever owned. And to be honest, guys, this car owes me about 10 grand as it is. So I think for the money, you can't really beat the value, the comfort, the daily ability, just the level of luxury that you get in this Merc is just unbeatable. And I've owned a bunch of daily drivers from Civics, Evos, not really dailies, but I've owned a ton of cars and I still think that this car, for the money, you just can't beat it. So come on round and I'll show you the back end of this thing. So at the back, obviously we've got nice leather rear seats which are nice and cool i'm very happy about the condition and this is the key for the merc so this is the same key that they use for about 15 years which started on this car so whenever you see this merc key it actually spanned from 1995 a pretty interesting story um, so this is the rear of the c180 it has an amg style exhaust this is actually x-force but it sounds pretty good when you boot it up Obviously, you've got the C180 badge here. There's no AMG badging, which is a good thing, but I do have plans to remove it. There is a little bit of condensation there from the plates, but just ignore that, please. So I can show you the bag setup, which is in the back. It's very, very grassroots and basic. So this is the bag setup, really messy, but just kind of how it's going right now. So 
very makeshift but it works and we like that so that's pretty much it for the walk around of this car i do have many more plans for it to get it to a unique looking style of a merc lowrider situation i really like this three-quarter appearance from the back here this looks really different normally you don't see many bag mercs out in australia there are a few in japan but not really that common definitely more common in the bmw world obviously they make great drift cars mercs not so much more of a cruiser but i think next to i guess a jzx 100 chaser this is a pretty cool comparison of europe versus japan but guys, let's go for a little drive in this thing. I really want to show you what it's like to live with. I've done about 10,000 kilometers since owning this car for about two months now. So it's been really, really good. Guys, let's go for a drive. All right, guys, we are jumping in the Mercedes-Benz, the W202 C-Class, the C180. And here we are. All right, guys, so we're setting off in the C180. First thing to note is that, guys, this car is not a fast car. It makes 120 horsepower or 90 kilowatts. So because we have speed humps here, I like to air the car up a little bit so we can get a little bit of room so that it doesn't scrub. It is a little bit dark in these woods so we are going to take these off but yeah just cruising it's extremely comfortable right off the gate as you guys can see it just handles the bumps very well on the speed up just trying to be as safe as possible but we'll try to get out of here as quickly as we can and then we can discuss more about the car oh my lord these speed humps Now on the highway, I think something to note is that immediately my driving position in the Merc is one of comfort. Like to put it simply, it's just all about getting to point A to point B in a comfortable, cruisy kind of way. I don't have the car set up in a situation where I'm facing like this. I have my, my wrist over the steering wheel. I just want to be at all times comfortable in this car for a lack of a better word. I like the seats kind of raked back kind of further away so I have more leg room and I'm just cruising this car is all about that for me and it just makes it a really effortless car when doing so but these things are honestly bulletproof this car has a four-cylinder 1.8 liter engine making 120 horsepower in bumper to bumper traffic this car doesn't make any noise it's completely silent We've got the aircon blowing on here with this wood grain interior system. We've also got a nice aftermarket Bluetooth Continental single DIN, which is actually very OEM-like and I really like that touch. You've got the airbag module system here. I typically have that with the rear at 60 to 70 and the front at about 90. So it's got a nice low but aggressive daily wool stance on the road. But when you're just punting around town, this car just drives so sublime in automatic. You've got four gears and it selects them quite intelligently. I wouldn't say it's anything that it's going to effectively mean sports mode for this car, but this car isn't intended for that. For all intents and purposes, this car is just a daily driver. And when it comes to that, it delivers it in such a way that makes it so easy. Very good on fuel. It handles the bumps well. Immediately, you'll notice that this entire cabin is decked with high quality leather and good plastics throughout. And you just know that this car was in the era of luxury and when they didn't really have to skimp out on quality of components. This car was a pretty penny when brand new. I don't want to spit out a random figure, but they were probably worth a lot more compared to the Australian counterparts or the Japanese counterparts. But this being a base model, it was definitely the cheapest of the bunch. They did release actually a C43 AMG, which is the top of the line model. And that was effectively three times the price of this. This car being bagged, it does have a compressor in the tank and that automatically keeps air in there or it builds air when needed in the car so it doesn't deflate in the bags of the struts so yeah just a really comfortable car even on bags you've got cruise control you've got bluetooth you've 
you've got all the necessities that you would want in a car and when you're cruising it's just chill you can pop this car over into manual mode and do the silly stuff if you want it's got a nice little note with this aftermarket muffler exhaust I'll show you guys what that sounds like pop the windows another feature that I really like about this car is the sunroof up here this sunroof fully articulates up as well as back just a nice luxury touch there. Just what you would know about a Mercedes Benz. Okay, this car is by no means fast. It's definitely the slowest car that I've ever owned. It's definitely slower than the EJ8 Honda Civic that I was using to run around with. That car is actually up for sale as well, guys. I have decided to let go of all my daily drivers because this Mercedes Benz W202 has really taken over for everything that I love in a daily driver, a cruiser, a good A to B car, something that's luxurious whilst also being a really cool looking car. I just can't really get enough of this. There's really not that much to say because it's so stock standard. You could buy a standard one for about two grand and have all of what I'm talking about effectively without the bags, just like this. And I honestly can't recommend them enough. In the 10,000 Ks that I've done, in the three months that I've owned it, it has been absolutely brilliant. Apart from the small issues of the car being effectively nearly 25 years old, 23 years to be exact, by that, the coil packs, the spark plugs, and just an oil change, it has been bulletproof, and I really can't recommend this car enough. It has been a peach. So if you guys want to see more content on the W202 Mercedes-Benz, I've got a whole lot more planned for this car. If you have enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button in the comments below. Tell me what you like about the W202 as well as other content you want to see on the car. As well as that guys, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.